we've got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs>to another episode of the blue mountain makes podcast my name is mary lynn coming to you as always from the blue ridge mountains of virginia and this is gonna be probably a pretty long one so since my last episode i went on vacation so i'll talk a little bit about that show what little bit of knitting i got finished while i was gone i have two finished objects to share with you guys a couple works in progress and yesterday was the maryland sheep and wool festival I have an itchy dog, sorry. Just heads up, it's gonna be happening this whole time. <laughs> She's old. Um, Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival was yesterday, I went with my mom, it was a great day. So I bought a lot of wool. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll show you all that and kinda give a heads up of, if you've never been, like what to expect, how it was. This was my first time going, so I thought that'd be a little interesting. And also FYI, I'm hot. <laughs> it is uh, probably like 77 degrees today. I have all the windows shut because it's very loud with the road noise. I live right on a major highway. So, um, yeah, I'm a little warm. My face is a little red because this is very wooly. I am wearing shorts though, so we're good. If there's a wardrobe change halfway through, you'll know why. So I guess let's just jump in and talk about what I'm wearing. This is A, covered in wool fibers. B, <laughs> The Schweik Pullover by Caitlin Hunter. It is a top-down round yoke lace and some color work um, pullover. I'll stand up so you can get a better view of it. It is very cute and I love it. And yeah, that's about where it hits me. So... Uh, what do I have to say about this? So I used Drops Flora for the main color, this dark gray. And then my color work and lace pattern was done in Malabrigo sock yarn. It's a fingering weight. Both are fingering weights, so a fingering weight sweater. And the only modifications I did, so I knit, I started the size four. And then I got to the end of the color work split for my sleeves and I started on the body and it was way too big and I realized that the way that the pattern is made it's made to be kind of baggy which is fine I like you know I don't like anything with negative ease but it had like way too much positive ease plus I usually only make a size three in Caitlin Hunter patterns so I was already bigger than I usually go mainly because I felt like since this is all lace and you know comes down quite a bit. If I wanted to wear this to work, I'd have to wear a tank top underneath. So I wanted to make sure I had enough room to put on a t-shirt or a tank, depending on where I'm going to wear it. So like today I don't have anything. I mean, I'm wearing a bra, but so it doesn't, it's not like, you know, it's super revealing or anything, but I just felt better, like better safe than sorry at, in an office setting. So anyways, that was my thought process going into it. I definitely could have gotten away with just doing the size three all the way down because I decreased 60 stitches-ish after I finished the, the yoke and split for the sleeves. I did an even decrease all the way around. This whole sweater is taking me like two months to finish because I've knit the whole body doing side decreases, so like waist shaping, and it looked really stupid because I did so many. Um, then I had to rip it out and redo it all. So yeah, 60 stitches decreased. I think the top still fits okay, like the, the larger yoke still fits fine, and the lace work hasn't pulled out too much. I was 
kind of worried about that like it would be really baggy up here and then you know more fitted on the body but it's not bad the sleeves I did probably I don't even know what the recommended decrease amount was in the pattern because I did not look because I just knew going in like I don't like baggy sleeves so they're not they're not like super super tight but I decreased every fifth round all the way down so I, and I think I stopped yeah like here ish and then I added the color work in the sleeve which I just thought was like a nice little pop of something you know this is something that you do in uh, Andrea Mowry's Alpenglow sweater which I made last fall so I just thought it'd be kind of nice to have a little repeat of this color in the sleeves um, the first sleeve was great I always knit my sleeves on short circulars and it was fine um, it was a little tight once I got to the ribbing especially with the color work because it just that's the nature of it so I thought oh I'll just switch to magic loop when I get to the second cuff so it won't be so tight it won't be so hard on my hands it'll go a little faster wrong 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 I ripped this cup out so many times <laughs> And now it's like, it's not as long as the other one. And it's, I mean, it's noticeable when you hold them up together, but it's not super noticeable otherwise. I did a different uh, cast off. It looked bad. It was like roughly, I tried to fix it with a crochet edge. That looked stupid. I ended up having to rip it out. I ended up having to use all of my, so it's knit on a uh, US 5. And I... Did not go down a size for my ribbing. I always do that. I always forget. But anyway, so I took all the five inch size five tips for my interchangeables that I had to kind of make like poor man's double pointed needles because <laughs> I don't have any. And I double pointed the, the rest of this cuff and I was just so sick of it by the time I was done when I realized it was a little bit too short. It's not going out again. It's just not going to happen because not only... <laughs> When I finally got it fixed and I finally got it all finished, I don't know what I was thinking, but I always do, I don't remember the name of the cast off. I know it's got a name, but it's just like knit two together through the back loop, pass it back over, knit two together, you know, all the way around. I didn't do it through the back loop. So I did on this one. So it's got this really nice clean edge. It looks great. You know, this one, no, I just knit two together all the way around. So then it pulled that color work onto the actual cuff edge so I didn't have this clean line like this one. I was so annoyed. <laughs> I was so annoyed. Like I was almost done. I was like, I'm gonna finish this before bed and I'm gonna block it overnight and then I'll be able to wear it the next day. And I was so angry that I had just had to put it down and leave because I just oh. so that delayed me even further. So this is not a hard pattern. If you're thinking you want to make it and I'm just complaining about all my trials and tribulations, <laughs> they were a hundred percent my problem my fault so like the lace work is pretty simple um the color work is super super simple you don't have long floats or anything the, she always writes such good patterns everything's very clear um yeah so if you're interested i would a hundred percent say definitely make this and i've gotten so many compliments on it already i love the way it fits i love how the drops alpaca feels i've made um oh my goodness what's it called of the birch pullover by Andrea Mowry I made last year in drops flora but it's an all over um fisherman's rib or half fisherman's rib sweater so it's I feel like it's kind of hard to compare yarns when they're knit in stockinette versus they're knitting something like super squishy and and textured like that so I will say I really like how this feels and it's very lightweight, but it's still warm. It's a little too warm. I am going to change my shirt. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, that's that. So US 5 needles, Drops Flora, Malabrigo, Sock Yarn. Cannot remember the color of it, the colorway. Yeah, this has been on my to knit list for a while, so I'm very glad it's done and I do love it and I will be right back. Oof, okay, much better. Anyways, my next finished object is... My work avid shawl. This is absolutely stunning. I love it. Ta da! It's huge. I mean, it's a Stephen West schlinget, so it's kind of hard to get it all in frame, but gosh, it's beautiful. I love it so much. I've been working on this for a couple of months now. 
this is not something that like I'm trying to rush through. I know it was when you get to the bottom for these like chevron border stripes there's over a thousand stitches in each row and I just know it's not worth the stress of trying to like hurry up and finish it you know so I just enjoyed the process and enjoyed looking at these beautiful colors and this was in my I made it my process knit I'm usually a product knitter I should I don't know I don't know if that's strictly true I like mindless knitting sometimes and this is not mindless generally speaking I mean some sections are pretty mindless like you know this striped section is super super simple um and, and none of it's really hard that's the thing that gets me about Stephen West patterns he's so good at taking simple ideas and simple techniques and making these gorgeous fantastic over-the-top shawls because it's all just knitting and purling and there's like a three stitch cable in there which is not hard and you can do it on the needles so it's it's just stunning and beautiful and it's everything and I love the color combination I would never ever have looked at this and been like yeah I'm gonna put all of these wacko colors together because this is not I mean I wear a lot of darks I wear a lot of dark gray black navy dark red and then you know white as my neutral generally speaking so for this it's like whoo but I am wearing the heck out of this. We had a weird cold spell here in Virginia. So uh, as soon as this was finished, I finished this sun last Sunday, last Saturday. We got back from vacation late, late Friday night. And I think I finished this Saturday and was wearing it by Sunday. I'm just wearing this sucker around the house because I love it. It is ginormous. So the yarns I used in this, way too hot to wear it right now. Oof. Oof. Yarns I used in this are mostly Drops Alpaca, um, and it was a sash dive. So, the yellow, the white, and the beige are all Drops Alpaca. The blue is perennial, uh, no, 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 that's a Kelburn Woolens Perennial, which is a wool alpaca blend. And then the orange is Dirty Dye Works 100% fingering weight. I don't know what the name of the base is, but it's 100% merino, and it's a super wash merino. So the blue and the orange were originally purchased to go into the um, Twists and Turns shawl, the Mystery Knit Along from last year, and I started it, and I did not like it, so I just ripped it out, saved the yarn, and put it to a much, much better use, in my personal opinion, in this... And it gives me like really Aztec kind of vibes, these colors. Kind of makes me think, you know, because I have a lot of turquoise and, and the color of the pottery and stuff. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's the vibes I get from it. And I love it. And because it's so much alpaca, it's so slinky. It blocked out beautifully. I did pin the um, chevron stripes, which I don't usually do. And I don't know if it was really worth it. I don't know if... I almost wish I would have left like two or three unpinned just to see how they would have blocked out because I don't feel like they, they I guess I didn't stretch them enough to make them really really pointy but there are so many of them I used up almost all of my pins I ran out of block space because there's a ton I mean you know a thousand stitches it's gonna be a bunch of little points so that was uh, kind of a pain in the butt that I don't know was really worth it but <laughs> so many of them but yes that is that is my Aurora Cabin Shawl. I love it. It's perfect. It's beautiful. So there's that. Those are my only two finished objects. Um, while I was on vacation, I cast on a pair of socks that I thought for sure I would finish while I was gone. Ha ha. Jokes. <laughs> and my province top, I also cast on while I was down there. I ended up having a lot of extra room in my luggage. I was like, just put some yarn in it. Why not? I didn't have any issues getting my needles through. I was a little concerned because I did take my chow goos, my metal tip chow goos, which are expensive. And I would have been really, really upset if I had to like ditch them at the TSA. But everything I saw online said that like there was no big deal to take your knitting with you. So I just did it and it worked out. So, ooh, thank goodness for that. But so here's my one sock. It's not anything fun or exciting, I don't suppose. Ta -da, it's a sock whatever I finished one and a half of these so the other one I'm not going to bring out to show you because it's like I said it's a sock this is toe up 
It's 58 stitches for, yeah, 58 stitches, a short row heel, which is the first time I've done that. And then just like a short little ribbed cuff at the top. It looks very large. I got like halfway through one of them at 60 stitches, which is what I usually knit my socks at. It was too big. One size one, US ones. It was too big, ripped it out, started this one. My husband the whole time was like, this is still going to be too big. I don't think it would be great for like shoes, <laughs> wearing with shoes, but as a house sock, it's going to be totally fine. It's not floppy or anything, but I think, I don't know if this yarn is just like thick or if I, I don't know. I don't know. This is Hawthorne, the kettle dyed Hawthorne from Knit Picks. And it is a fingering weight yarn, but I think, I might be lying, so don't quote me on this, but I think this is 100% wool. Maybe not. I don't know. In any case, the other socks I've knit have been out of a, um, like an 80-20 superwash merino and nylon base, and they are, they fit a lot different. So, interesting, but I really like the colors, and I've had this yarn in my stash for a while. It was one of those things, like, I needed free shipping, so I was like, why not just add a really pretty hand dyed. I don't think it's actually hand dyed, but they say it is. So yeah, that's my sock. Not much to write home about with the sock, but um, I did find, I make these on Magic Loop. I prefer Magic Loop for my socks. I used to only do double pointed needles and I just got out of that. Um, I found it to be a little too fiddly. I mean, I did that for years, years, and I really want to be a sock knitter, and I kept saying I wanted to be a sock knitter, and I bought like the little teeny tiny child goo circulars, and I hated knitting on those. And then I bought the Magic Loop, and I love it. And I feel like I can go a lot faster with my socks, and I have the five inch tips, what I prefer for all of my knitting, and it just fits in my hand a little bit better, and I don't lose speed or find it fiddly to work with, so I do really prefer that for my socks. <laughs> However, when you're on a plane, and you've got to like pull the thing out on my way down to so we left Richmond Virginia and then we flew into Miami Florida and from Miami flew into Turks and Caicos so I to both of those flights down I was not sitting next to my husband so it wasn't like you know I don't mind if I'm in his face with my knitting but I was stuck in the middle on my first flight so I was like eh, eh. It was not fun. It was bad. It was really bad. I'm pretty sure the lady next to me was like, what are you doing? So I gave up on that and I switched to my province top because I was just doing, it's a bottom up top. So it's just knitting in the round. So it was no big deal. And that was great. And I got through almost a whole skein just on the flight, which was great. Um, I really, really thought that I was going to spend more time. Like we just stayed on the beach. If I'm going to a beautiful island, I'm staying on the beach. But the people I went with are usually kind of like, you know, sit and enjoy the oh, the beach view kind of people. It, whereas my husband and I are definitely like, I'm getting in the ocean, I'm going to swim kind of people. So I guess I thought we would kind of do like a meet halfway and spend some time on the beach and some time in the ocean. But I got them hooked on snorkeling. So we just swam all day every day. I did next to no knitting while we were out during the day. And then by the time we got home, I was so tired. I was like, <sighs> whatever. So I, I did a little bit in the morning and a little bit in the evening, but it wasn't anything like major knitting time like I kind of thought I would have. So not a whole lot of progress on that, but since I've been home, I've really busted out most of that time, um, which is somewhere here. Oh yeah. So province top, I am knitting on size six needles, drops of bells. For some of you that it's a linen linen viscose and cotton blend I think for sure and I buy all of my drop stuff from Wool Warehouse because if you live in the U.S. you know they don't sell it here it's a bummer and this is gonna be really awkward to show because it is a bottom up top and I have not I'm almost done I'm gonna finish this today for sure I almost was like eh, I should just finish it before the podcast but I was kind of running out of time I've got some stuff I have to do today so I'm just going to awkwardly show you with it in flappy pieces. <laughs> so it's got a really short rib, which I kind of almost wish, this is how much it called for in the pattern, but I kind of wish I would have made it a little bit longer because I do prefer a longer rib 
and it, I, it's like folds really bad which I'm hoping it doesn't with blocking and or wearing but I'm not sure but like you can see the line where it just wants to fold up on itself so we'll see I don't think it's gonna bother me enough to rip out the hem and try to knit down on it I don't think I'm gonna care that much but anyways so you knit in stockinette up the body of the sweater and then you get to where you split for your arms and you start the front and back are knit flat. So this is the back, which is all done. And it's got this really nice lace pattern that's super simple and easy to follow, easy to memorize. It's seven stitches, seven stitch, four row repeat. So simple, which, you know, this is almost enough to be my mindless knit, but it's just enough lace work that like, I have caught myself, I was watching TV the other night and I was like, the last two rows are definitely wrong. <laughs> Because you want your eyelets to, to line up so that they make, you know, that kind of V-shaped pattern, you know. So I do pay some attention. But you can still watch TV. You just gotta... It's not like movie theater knitting, that's what I'm trying to say. So finish that, and I've got... You do a little teeny bit of, like, neck shaping on the back, and then you put your shoulders on hold, because it is a drop shoulder sweater, maybe. And then... Now I'm doing the front, and the front is interesting because it is, your lace is in a V, like kind of a V-neck sort of thing, but it's still going to be that drop shoulder. So it's just like that extra little added detail, and I really, really like it. So at this point, I just need to knit in the lace pattern for another 20 rows, I think, and then do a little bit of front neck shaping, and then sew my shoulders together, and that's it. I'm not adding sleeves. It does call for sleeves, and the sleeves are knitted in the lace pattern, but it's a drop shoulder, and I think it's going to hit me probably like here-ish, and I think that's plenty, especially because I'm going to plan to wear this in the summer. It's going to be very open and airy, and I don't necessarily feel like I need these long, you know, lace work sleeves, so I'm just going to leave them off. And that means I'll be done that much faster. Yay! So this has been a very enjoyable knit so far. It's a pretty clear pattern. She has, she does the um, lace work both as like written instructions and charted, which is super nice. But like I said, it, it's really simple. So if you've never done lace work before, I think you could definitely do this and be fine. Um, yeah, and it's knit on size sixes, so it's going pretty quickly. And yeah, I'm enjoying it so far really nice. I'll have this to wear this week because it's going to be hot again. The weather here isn't so wild. So while we were gone, it was in like the 40s and 50s. We left, it was in the 80s. Gone, 40s and 50s. Come home, 50s. Next week, 80s. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> I just don't get it. I think it looks like when we left for vacation, it looked like it was the dead of summer. Like my grass was brown and dry because we hadn't had any rain. It was so hot. Everything's in full. Like, all the trees are leafed out. It looks like it's the middle of summer here. And even just going up yesterday to Maryland, they still have trees that are, like, just barely budded out, which is wild. It's only two, it's two hours, two and a half hours away. So it's crazy how much that little bit of distance changes the way everything looks. So that was a weird tangent. Sorry. <laughs> Back to the knitting. Those are really my, oh, I was going to say it was my only two works in progress, but the other one is like, you can barely call it a work in progress, but I'll show you anyway. So I don't think I'm going to get this done in time, but Andrea Mowry is doing her March to May knit along right now. And it's obviously like mid-March. Uh, so I had the brilliant plan. I was going to cast on a pink fizz and finish it by the end of May. I don't think it's going to happen. So, so far, <laughs> all I've done is the ribbing, which looks really nice. I'm using Drops Kids Silk Mohair and Drops Nord for the yarns, holding them together. Yay. Uh, I bought the Nord colorway. It's called Lemongrass. And I don't know why I thought that it was going to be darker than it was. I mean, it's literally called Lemongrass. So when I got it and it was like a yellowy green, <laughs> I was surprised. I don't know why dumb so it's been sitting in my stash for like eight months because i bought it with the intention of making a natasha hornsby sweater and there's no way i would just wear this greenish uh, 
yellow because it would not look good on my skin for sure. But then I remembered, I was like, oh, I have a bunch of Kids Silk Mohair from Drops that I haven't used in this color. And it, you know, plain green. And it tones it down so well. I think that this is a great color. I think it'll look pretty good on me. That's what it's going to be. So my pink fizz is a green fizz. And this is the back hem. Kind of weird because you do the back hem, cut it, and put it on hold. And then you do the front hem totally separately. And then you get it together and put it in the round. And then you start knitting in the round for the actual sweater. So it is knit bottom up in the round for the most part. And it's got like texture or lace work. I don't know what you would really call it on the sides. It's got, like, I think it has cables in it. Maybe some bobbles, which I really, really hate doing, but they look cute. I think I'm going to try the, if, if it does have bobbles, if I'm not crazy, I am think I'm going to try making them with a crochet hook this time, which I've never done before, but I imagine is much less stressful. Really, it's just the repetitive annoyance of knitting, putting it back on, knitting, putting it back on. I was like, handle it. So, do I think I'm going to finish this? Probably not. I say that. It is knit on size, so the ribbing is fours. And the body of the sweater is done on sixes. And she actually recommends that you go up to sevens for the sleeves. And I have had problems with her sleeves in the past being too tight on me. Um, she says in her, I don't know, it's not really a blog, but basically her blog posts um, on, on YouTube that she finds that people tend to knit tighter in smaller circumferences like sleeves. My gauge doesn't change. And I have noticed that the way that she wears her sweater, so the way that she designs her sweaters are very close fit to her because she is very cute and petite and she has really slim arms versus someone like Caitlin Hunter that tends to have more room in all of her sleeves. And I prefer that feel. Um, I really like a tapered sleeve. I don't, I'm not a big like bell open sleeve person, but I definitely don't like them tight either. And I really, really don't like them tight in the upper arm. I just feel like it's, I don't like that feeling. So, I'm definitely going to be doing, going up a size. And we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Not sure. Yeah, not much to say about this so far. I have just finished. I'm now, like, officially at the point I need to join these in the round. And it was, like, late at night and I didn't want to start that and mess it up. You know what I mean? So, that will be this evening's project after I finish my Robin stop. And then I'm going to take the, the lace chart and I have, um... The good notes app and that's where i keep all like my knitting journals and my spinning journals and stuff i keep it in there so for each project that has color work or um you know lace work whatever i take a screenshot of that part of the pattern drop it into my good notes app so for my project page it'll, it'll have all the information about needle size what yarn i used when i started it blah 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 and then the next page i'll do the whole page of just that lace work and then i'll I'll mark it off as a go. And it makes it so much easier to keep up with. I don't have to have something printed that I have to keep track of. It's just always on my iPad or on my phone because it talks back and forth, which is great. So that's how I do that. Yeah, that's all of my works in progress. So I guess I'll do like a really quick, if you're interested, if not, feel free to skip forward. Um, kind of an overview of Turks and Caicos. I'll ha I have a little bit of footage from there. My husband brought his drone, so that was awesome. I went with my husband, my dear friend Kim, and her fiance George, and we were there for six days. We did an Airbnb, rented a car, and we just went over the whole island. We were on, it's really strange. So the cruise port is on Grand Turk Island, which is much, much bigger than where the airport is. So the airport is on Providencialis. I probably butchered that, but we call it Pro, everybody calls it Provo, so Provo. And it's a tiny, tiny island. Beautiful beaches. The Grace Bay Beach is there. Um, the Chalk Sound is there. Oh my gosh, the water. I've been to a couple different like Caribbean islands before, but the water in Turks and Caicos is such a vibrant turquoise blue that it literally turned the bottoms of the clouds bright blue. It was so weird. It was easier to see it when you had like polarized lenses on. So, you know, sunglasses, <laughs> everything had this like turquoise lining. It was really neat. And we were on, um, we took a boat 
like a charter trip that took us out to like a reef and so we're we're on the boat my husband looks out and this like seagull flies by and he's like wow they have blue birds down here and i was like no it's just a reflection of the water off of the bird <laughs> look at the blue bird but yeah it was really stunningly beautiful um the island itself people were not the friendliest like locals not that you know i expect them to bend over backwards or anything like that it was just kind of kind of strange and i think a lot of it too was like we didn't necessarily there's very much a tourist part of town that we didn't end up finding until like our fourth or fifth day there and it's basically like those are the resorts so you go to the resort you stay on the resort you might walk a street or two over to a restaurant or something and you go right back to this resort and we didn't do that we stayed in like a condo in an apartment complex so we got a lot of kind of weird looks from people because we would go to they had like this cash and carry um convenience store which was basically where they had all their bulk goods and so we bought some of our groceries there we bought most of our groceries we only ate out once a day people talk about like the food is super expensive down there and it is depending on what you buy so like you know we went into it expecting it was gonna be totally outrageous but a carton of eggs a 12 you know a dozen eggs was only 385 so it wasn't terrible however that being said if you wanted something that was specific to like america and imported boy how are you gonna pay for it like modello not that's not american but you know what i mean modello beer a case 24 pack case of modello beer was 82 dollars <laughs> what <laughs> Uh, Corona was $79, I think. Yeah. It was just, it was outrageous. Outrageous. And people were buying them. It was it's like, what are you doing? Because you could buy the local beer. They had one brewery and a distillery on the island, which we visited. That was pretty cool. But if you buy the local stuff, it was $12 for a six pack. Like, come on, people. My dog wants out. One second. But yes, yeah, so we were there for the beaches. The beaches were absolutely beautiful. I can't say enough about them. It was very, uh, not crowded. So we went in the last week of April. Obviously we missed spring break because I'm not touching that. And it's also way more expensive to travel during spring break. So we didn't have to fight with that. We didn't really have to fight with like any families. And I think a lot of it too was most people are staying on those resorts. So we had the car, we would just drive. I think we hit like five or six different beaches just to say that we had done them all. Like there was one beach we had to go to that they, they pretty specifically said, you need a Jeep. Don't try to take this really crappy road unless you have all-wheel drive. So we're in this, like, teeny, tiny, crappy rental. My husband's like, we can make it. <laughs> he just drives off. And we did. We made it. We definitely scraped the bottom of that thing a couple times. But the little thing made it. I was proud of it. And it was so beautiful. It was this just completely secluded beach. There was nobody. One other couple showed up. So we had this whole stretch of beach to ourselves. They had all these little like reef starters out in the water. So we were snorkeling around. They had beautiful fish. My husband saw some squid there. It was really neat. And it was empty. And I found that most of the stuff was empty. It was just us. So anyways, best part of the trip by far. The last day we were there, we did a charter out to um, like snorkel over top of a reef in the deeper water. And on the way back... They were like, oh yeah, you know, the water's really calm today. You might see the wild dolphins. They have three dolphins that live around the island. It was just the mom and dad and then they had a baby. And they're like, yeah, if we see them, we'll just hop in the water and go swim with them. Which, I don't know, I kind of figured the chances of that happening were slim to none. But we saw them. They stopped the boat. We jumped out and I swam with wild dolphins. It was amazing. So the mom and dad were friendly enough that they kind of stayed around but they were definitely like out past the boats but they watched their baby who was full grown I mean it was like a five six foot long dolphin it was a, it was a big animal and she would play with you it was so cool so they had like there's tons of sand dollars like down they would dive down you just pick up a sand dollar so the captain of our boat picked up a sand dollar off the ocean floor and like would show it to her and like a little dog she'd come and put it on her nose and just swim around with it it was so neat. She was, like, less than three feet away. She just swam right in front of you, didn't care, swam underneath of you around. You could hear, like, the clicking noises that they make and the, her little screechy, dolphin-y noises. I guess she was talking to her parents. I don't know. It was so cool. And we just kind of swam around with her for an hour. It was amazing. It was so amazing. 
my husband got some GoPro footage, so I'll include that in here, which is so cool. But um, he, she dropped her sand dollar, so he dove down to pick it up and didn't realize she was watching him and she was behind him. So as he was coming up for air, I watched her come up behind him and she grabbed it out of his hand and took off. And he was like, what is that? <laughs> but it was so cool. It was really, really, like, I don't think I'll ever top that. And the fact that it's, like, I, I'm not a big fan of, like, SeaWorld and stuff like that. I don't like animals necessarily in captivity unless, like, if you're at a zoo and they have injured animals and that's where they live now. Like, the DC Zoo has this really gorgeous bald eagle, but he can't fly, so he can't take care of himself. So, he lives there, and I think that's great. Um, but I would not be okay with, like, paying to swim with dolphins, which I know other people do, and that's totally fine. And I've gone to places and watched other people swim with dolphins. Like, down in Grand Cayman, you can just kind of walk in and watch the dolphins do their stuff with people that are paying to be in the tank with them. But it's just not for me. So, I never really thought I'd have that experience. But it was awesome. It was amazing. It was amazing. Anyway. That's that. I'll stop talking about it. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yesterday was Maryland Sheep and Wool. I have never been. This is my first time. I live in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, so it's two... It, was, it said it was two hours and 45 minutes. I drove a little fast. We got there in two and a half hours. And it is in F West Friendship, Maryland, I think. Friendship's definitely in the name. But it's just on a state fairground, and everybody says that it's, like, one of the biggest events on the east coast and so ryan back last year was my first time i'd been to a fiber event and in my mind i was like there's no way it's gonna be as big as ryan back because ryan back was insane but it was very busy there were a ton of vendors um it wasn't overly crowded we had fantastic weather it's very sunny so if you stood out in the sun for too long it got a little little hot but this like really nice cool breeze would come through they had plenty of food options there was like a dog sheep show thing. I took a little bit of footage of that. I'm not very good about vlogging and I really need to work on that. Like I had every intention of going in and getting like a bunch of little clips to show you know how it is and what to expect and you know how the trip was up there and I think I took like three videos which I'll include and a couple pictures and I just don't think about it and then I'm like oh yeah I should have videotaped that. Crap. Like I was standing in line to get a hot dog. <laughs> this girl in front of me had a funnel cake. And she dips her hand in her pocket. She comes out with this, like, really nice vlogging camera. It's got, like, the microphone on it and everything. And then she just videotapes it. Slips it back in. <laughs> just eats it. It's like, clearly I'm not in the right mindset for this stuff. Because I just, I don't know. Also, I'm kind of thinking, like, do you really want to see a picture of my hot dog? Probably not. I didn't really want to see that hot dog. It was only okay. And it was $5. Fair food. You know you're going to pay a lot for it. Whatever. So it was awesome. There was tons of sheep. I got to pet a bunch of sheep. Um, I went with a list of like different types of fiber that I wanted to buy. I did not want to buy any yarn. I am really, really, really into my spinning. So all of my acquisitions from it are going to be fiber related. So if that doesn't interest you, what do they buy now? And I'll catch you next time. But I did buy quite a lot of fiber. I did not buy any raw fleeces. I don't have anything to process the fleece yet. Like, I don't have any carters. I really want a drum carter, but I'm not paying for a drum carter until I know what I'm doing, you know what I mean? And yeah, so I just really, I wanted to try different types of fleece out because um, I found that like I love Blue Face Luster, I love Rambouillet, I haven't spun my Targi yet, but I think I'm probably gonna like that too. So I wanted, I really wanted to get my hands on Cormo. And something else that I did not accomplish that I can't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> but anyway, so let's look at all that stuff. There were so many vendors. And it was really interesting because when we first started, go, like, you know, kind of going through the um, the stalls of the vendors, my mom does not knit. She doesn't crochet. She doesn't spin. She doesn't weave. She doesn't do any of that. So she's just like, look at all this stuff. Look at all this yarn. She doesn't know what any of it is or, you know, what it's for. She... She was really funny. She, um, we saw like the bags of raw fleece and she's like, why don't you just buy that? And it's like, because I can't do anything with that yet, mom. I can't do that. I have to have, I need the fluff. It's gotta be fluffy. That's all I can work with. So it was just funny kind of not really teaching her, but showing her, you know, this is what this is for. And this is what that's for. And they had a really big auction tent. So we went through and looked at all the different wheels and stuff. And she's a really bad influence on me as far as spending goes. Cause she's like, 
well, I think you should just register for the auction. Just buy a new wheel. And I was like, I don't need a new wheel. And she's like, but you want it. So just buy it. I'm like, mom. <laughs> and she's like stuffing my bags full of stuff. Like, you need this fiber and this. And oh, I thought this was pretty. And we'll just buy it because it's not like you're coming back anytime soon. I'm like, yes, yes. She's a terrible influence. But I did buy some very pretty things that I might not have if she hadn't told me I should. <laughs> so I bought a lot. Which might not be a lot for other people, but it's a lot for me. <laughs> So, I will do my best to remember what came from who. I didn't buy all that many different vendors, but I did buy a lot from the vendors I did buy from. So, let's get into that. The first thing is <laughs> this giant one pound ball of Merino. Um, I saw this colorway and it was very pretty and all I could think was, I need to spin that and then pair that with some kid silk mohair like in a rust color maybe the rust color from knitting for olive and wouldn't this be the most gorgeous fall sweater ever it does kind of you know does it look that great with my skin tone maybe not I don't know I like it though I liked it and it was a very good price and it smells like this soap I'll have to show you the soap I bought I don't ever buy soap but <laughs> we passed this place and the soap was, it's so smelly. I, it was in my mom's bag. I could smell it the whole day as I walked behind her. And now all my wool smells delicious like that soap. So this is just plain old plain merino. It is a little bit over one pound. Um, the vendor I bought this from was Della. I have, I have a receipt. Deli's Delights. And you could buy it. They had a bunch of different colors and you could just kind of pull it off and buy it by the ounce as you wanted to but this was the only I, this is definitely a sweaters quantity for me should be and I wanted to get some sweater quantities of yarn because most of what I have is either like hand dyed braids or some of the little samplers that I bought from Etsy and it's not enough to make one full garment so I really 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 like the idea of having a hand spun sweater that I've made so that's the goal with this and it's definitely gonna be an autumnal kind of colorway. Yeah, I do think I'm gonna go with like a rust or like a almost a brown color. I don't know if this is really coming up true. True to color. It's a little darker than that. It's not quite so orange, but camera settings. What are you gonna do? So there's my first one. I'm just gonna make a pile on the floor. Then my second one was from hip strings like hips and strings hip strings they had the most amazing beautiful braids there that was just oh, it was too much i only bought two there but the thing i really liked about what hip strings did was they had they have a lot of different types of fleece combos like different um breeds of sheep and the colorways were all great and they had little for the most part they didn't have it for every colorway or every like fiber combo but most of their products they had little mini skeins that they had spun up to show you what it's going to look like as an end product and that was so nice because it's so like this first one i bought is 50 percent merino wool 25 percent shetland wool 12.5 percent tessa silk and 12.5 percent sorry silk and it is Pretty sure that they made this like on a drum carter and just kind of like fed everything in there and to make this, but it's so pretty. And I've never spun anything like this before, so I didn't really know what to expect, especially with these kind of pops of, I'm assuming that's the sorry silk maybe. Yeah, I don't know what to expect from it. So I kind of passed this one by at first because it almost looks, I don't want to say it looks plain, but it, you know, they had so many other like poppy vibrant colors that kind of caught my eye but as I was going back through and I saw the skein that they had spun up it's so beautiful the way that the colored silks pop out of the spun yarn is stunning so I'm hoping that I can accomplish the same result I did not ask them how they spun it oh look it comes with a little stitch marker Woo, that's exciting <laughs> just noticed that I didn't ask them how they spun it. Um, I probably should have, but the girl that was like ringing people up, I don't, I don't think that she was like the owner. I think she worked there, so she might not have known because she knew 
She knew some things, but not all things. Let's listen to other people um, in their conversations. But anyways, this colorway is called Odin's Son, which I'm assuming is supposed to be Thor. Because that's Odin's son. I don't know. And yeah, it's like really reasonable. This is $16 for four ounces of fantastically beautiful fiber. So very excited about this one. It also smells like soap and wool. And I love it. And then the other thing I bought from them was this. Oh, this is beautiful. I love this. This is called Haunted, which is right up my alley. And this is 80% pole worth and 20% tusk silk. So pole worth was on my list of fibers I want to try. It is so soft. And I love this color. It's kind of, it's so moody. And of course, you know, it's hand dyed. So every braid was a little bit different. But this one had um, some more of the like kind of vibrant color pops. And I really like that. So I'm a Halloween girl through and through. If you know me, this is perfect. I'm going to be interested to see how this spins up. And it's like so, I've never used Polworth before. It's so fluffy. I'm very excited about this. I just kept thinking about it all day. This was my first purchase of the day. And I just kept being like, man, I really just want to just use it. But I'm going to wait because what I'm really trying hard to do is not to just spin to be spinning, you know? Like, I'm trying to know what type, either what project specifically or what type of project I'm going to be making as I start to spin anything that I'm spinning. Because I don't want just a bunch of, like... You know, like, if I spun this for a worsted weight, I don't knit that much worsted weight anything. And I certainly don't knit any worsted weight color work patterns that would require one skein of fancy color work. So I'm trying to be mindful of what I'm spinning and how I'm spinning and what I'm going to use it for. So not that that really matters. I like to spin just to spin, but I haven't used any of my hand spun yet. And I really, really want to because I just really want to. So that's that. All right. And then the next purchase was all from the same place. So this was right before we left. And this was from, oh, poo, I had the thing. Shoot. I got one of those like cards from them and I don't know what happened to it. So I will find it and I will write it on here. I had heard of this brand before and they had a lot of like already spun up yarn. I don't think it was hand spun. I'm pretty sure they have like a spinning mill. Yes, they said they were a carding and a spinning mill. So they had way more spun yarn than they did fiber. But like right in the front corner of this tent, they had this little tub full of bags of roving. And they were like, it's, how much was it? It was so cheap. So each bag is four ounces. And they were, I think it was four bags for $25. And so I bought eight bags and then they gave me a bigger discount and I got eight bags, two pounds of fiber for 40 bucks. That's so cheap. That's so cheap. So there's a lot of crinkling. I'm going to like try not to crinkle too much, but I haven't taken them all out of the bag. So the first one is falling out of its really nice, neat roll. Oops. But I bought four of these. So this will be my other sweater quantity and another beautiful fall colorway, right? I don't know how to do that. That looks like garbage. <laughs> so there was like no information on this. Literally the sign said, you know, eight ounce bags of extra fine wool. Just extra fine wool. It feels like extra fine merino. It is definitely softer than the orange. Eh, say that and feeling it. It's, it's a little softer. I would say if I had to guess that this is extra fine merino. Especially for that price. Um... Yeah, and I love this color. And I can't beat it that I got potentially a sweater's worth, sweater quantity's worth of fiber for $20. What? Crazy. So we got four of these. And then, again, it's my mother. She's like, you need more. She had her arms full. I was like, put it back. I don't need all of those. So the other colors I got were this one, which is also stunning. Uh, it's a little darker than that in real life. Yeah, it's a, little, it's a little darker, but still very beautiful blue. And this kind of powdery pink, which I'm thinking, again, sorry for the crinkles. Ta da like almost a nude pink. This is more the true to color than like that. But it does have a, like a nice little luster. Oh, 
That was a color option that I did not purchase. This weird tealy green. This is a little too bright for me. Um, but I'm thinking these two plus a cream would make a fantastic shawl. So I've got two of these, two of these. So it's eight ounces, eight ounces, which is going to be a decent amount of yarn. So I'm almost, I'm almost saying that I would like to make an Andrew Mowry shawl that I can't remember the name of. Oof. But in my mind, I saw these two together. I was like, oh man, it would be beautiful on that. It's got its color work and bobbles. It might be the boho shawl. I don't know. I'll look it up and put it in here. But yeah, so I'm not really sure. I have this. That's all I've purchased, but just, you know, more of the same colors. So I don't really know 100% what I'm going to do with these yet. So these will definitely be on hold for future spins. Um, my next spin, I've got some Rambouillet that I've decided I'm going to spin up as a fingering weight and then kettle dye it and then make it into a, another ripple bralette because it's so soft it's so skin soft it's gonna be perfect for that i think and the super wash merino one that i made is like super stretched out it i did not expect it to do anything different but i will say i now know i'm gonna go down a size in that pattern and i'm gonna see how a rustic rustic wool and not in superwash wool does because I think it'll hold its shape a little bit better. We'll see. But that having been said, I will show you the two things that I've spun since the last time I showed and then I will be done. And thanks for sticking around. I know this has been a lot. So I don't think I've showed this one. And if I have, sorry, I'll show it again. I'm very proud of it. This is a fingering weight braid that I got from couldn't tell you. I'll have to put it on the screen. They had a... So in one of my um, previous podcasts, I was complaining that, like, where I'm at, we don't have any spinners. I don't know any spinners. I don't really know how to get in touch with any spinners. Blah, blah, blah. And I really wish we had, like, a spinning guild or fiber festivals closer to us. And no sooner did I put that podcast out than the next day, I scrolling through Instagram and my local yarn store, it's like, come see us at the fiber festival in town. I'm like, what? <laughs> So we had the world's smallest fiber festival. I think there was like five or six vendors, maybe. But it was at the Frontier Culture Museum. And they are all about like hands-on kind of showing you how people used to live back in the 16 or 1700s. They have different little like hamlets, I guess, or like little farmhouses. And you walk through and it's most of the time it's reconstructed houses that they've shipped in from Ireland or England or Germany or wherever the, that region is and people are in period dress and they're doing period activities like spinning so it's very interesting so we got to go to the little fiber section and then still got to go through the whole museum which I hadn't been there in years so that was a lot of fun but they had some people doing like the, this huge old-timey spinning wheels and watching them try to like ply off of those was very interesting because yeah it's not anything like what I thought it would be like. And it looked very difficult and annoying. So I felt bad for them. But this was one of the colors. This is the only thing I bought while I was there. Um, and it is very, very pretty. And I love how it came out. I'm very proud of this one. Not so proud of how I skeined it up. Because uh, <laughs> it's very loose and floppy. But I'll just show you that side. So yeah, that is gorgeous. This is a merino. So there's that. And then I got back into... I bought some um, dyes from Dharma Trading and did a, another dyeing experiment because my first one failed so horrifically so this time i did a cabernet like a dark red wine color um amethyst and a green and this is how that turned out which i think is very pretty so i tried this is a two ply it is romney this is kent romney or romney kent whatever this is four ounces of that and I did do a fingering weight. And I was thinking I was going to make socks. But it's actually softer than I thought it would be. So I might end up using this as part of like a color work in something. I'm not really sure. This will definitely go in the stash though. But I was really excited with how those colors turned out. Because like I said, the first time was a horrible disaster. And I hated it. <laughs> so this came out really well. And I tried to... Um, I split. So I dyed the whole thing on the stove pulled it all apart and I'd split it in half lengthwise 
and then each half I split into three and then I spun them in the same direction for both sides so I could try to keep colors together for this. I didn't want super barber poly. It's still barber pulled because I didn't do a chain ply which I've not yet attempted but I think I'm going to soon. Um, yeah so I think this will have a little bit more of like a color a slower color shift than some of like that last one which was very barber poly but that is all I have to share with you today. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, if you went to the Maryland Sheep and Wolf Festival, let me know. How did you like it? Was it your first time? Will you go back? I did see Kevin and Ray from Needles at the Ready. I did not say hi. I also saw them at Rhinebeck. I feel like such a stalker. Like I have really bad social anxiety. So I see these people and I'm like, oh, there they are. <laughs> and then I won't speak to them. I just like creep around in the background. My mom's like, you need to go say hi. I'll go over and say hi for you. I was like, don't, don't bother them. They're talking to people. But yeah, I did, um, and well, my, I kind of like made it like a little circuit so I could be like, they're there again. Oh, you know, I'm not stalking. I just walked by. I was definitely stalking. Creep. <laughs> uh, but yes, so if you went, please let me know. And if you liked it, also let me know that. Or what did you not like about it? And that is all I've got. I will see you guys very soon. Happy knitting, happy spinning, happy crocheting, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Bye for now.